Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today, climb in the Cessna 310 tutorial. Alright, so there's several different types of climbs we're going to go over. Uh, first, I want to mention that what we did during the ending of every takeoff in the last video, where we brought the engines and the throttle back, and uh, all that other stuff, that is setting the aircraft up for cruise climb, and that's something you want to do around about a thousand feet above the airfield. Um, you can do it sooner. There's nothing wrong with doing it sooner. I'm going to shut ATC up real quick. There's nothing wrong with doing it before 1,000 feet. Just me personally, I prefer to wait till 1,000 feet to do it. Alright, so we're going to start climbing real quick. So what we did was we brought the engines back to 25 and the prop back to 24. No, 5. So yeah, you bring both of them back to 25. Bring engines back first, then RPM, and that's sort of that's sort of a generic operating term. Whenever you uh, have a constant speed prop on your plane, when you're making a power adjustment, so you bring throttle out first when you are decreasing power, and when you are increasing power, you use the prop first. So to decrease power, watch this. I'll level off real quick. If I want to decrease power, I bring the prop back first. Then I bring the, oh no, I bring the throttle back first, then the prop back. Sorry, I got them backwards. Versus to increase power, I increase the prop first, then I increase the throttle. Now, for most of your climb, you can deal with the 25-25. Uh, 25 manifold pressure, 25 on the throttle. As you climb higher, though, you're going to have a harder time maintaining that manifold pressure. Another thing we can also do, we can go ahead and flip off the fuel pumps. They're not needed after takeoff. Okay, so real quick, we're going to run through the after takeoff checklist. Brakes apply momentarily. Uh, the wheels, have, that's to stop the wheels on takeoff. Uh, they have already stopped, I can tell you that. So there, we'll apply the brakes just to make sure. Airspeed, uh, sorry. Landing gear is retracted, flaps are up. Best angle of climb speed, 85 up to 1,000. And best rate of climb speed is 107 up to 1,000. So that's after takeoff. Uh, next, we want to run through the cruise climb checklist. So right now, we're in what's called a cruise climb, where we are climbing up, but we want to have a, a good, decent amount of forward speed. Now that we're away from the airport, I can go ahead and turn off the landing lights. Cessna 310, you want to turn off the landing lights whenever you get a chance because, again, those little lights pop out of the wings here. They do, they do create some drag. All right, so cruise climb. Uh, we've are, again after our takeoff, we've already got everything set up by reducing the engine. So let's just run through the checklist. Power, 2,500 RPM, 24.5 inches manifold pressure. We are meeting that. As long as you're inside the green arc, you're good. Airspeed 115 to 130 knots. Let me pitch up to get back to 130 knots. So anywhere between 115, which is just below 120 right there, the first notch really above blue line, to 130, uh, really 140. So anywhere in the white arc between 115 and 140 is best. I know the checklist says 130. But I found 140 works best at first. Um, once you start getting to higher altitudes, then you gotta start worrying about the uh, airspeed a little bit more. But 140 or top of the wide arc works really good. Mixture adjust to maintain um, climb power. Uh, it does have notches here, one, two, three. It's on three right now as we are climbing about 6,000 feet. Uh, just bring it out a little bit. There's no real rule of thumb, but you do have these right here. You want to see these bars up higher. See, if I bring the mix... I'm going to do it on the left engine. The bars get lower. If I bring it out the back where it was, they get higher. Bring it out more, they get higher. You want to see them as high as possible, basically. Okay, I also note we're climbing above 6,500 now. I got the throttle on full. So, at this point, the throttle's full, and it's going to stay there for the rest of the flight. Any flights above 5,000, really, the throttle's going to stay on full. Cow flaps open. Make sure they are full open. Pushed all the way in. Auxiliary fuel pumps. 
um, on above 12,000 feet. We're not above 12,000, so they don't need to come on yet. But there's a notation here. During very hot weather, which is not hot right now, but during very hot weather, if there is an induction of vapor in the fuel system, i.e. you see fuel flow fluctuating, fuel flow fluctuating on the, um, i.e. if you see fuel flow fluctuating, this gauge right here, if you see it fluctuating a bit, turn on the fuel pumps to low, and that should stop it. Also, whenever you're flying above 12,000 feet, you want the fuel pumps on low. Alright, so that is cruise climb. Now, I'm not going to demo it, but I will go over the maximum climb stuff. So maximum climb is when you need to climb as fast as possible. Um, for that, you'd have full throttle and prop at 2700 RPM. So basically, you wouldn't reduce it after takeoff like we did. Quadrant friction lock is tightened. That's not simulated, but you would tighten up the friction lock on a throttle quadrant. Prop synchrophaser, phasing, an optional system. I do not believe the Milvis 310 has a prop sync simulation. It might, and I just don't know where the switch is, but you would adjust it if that were the case. And that, that's the climb, really. At least for normal climbs. Alright, um, now we're going to cover the single engine climb. I got both engines up and running at the moment, and the autopilot's flying the plane. We're going to go over the single engine climb procedures, but first I want to talk about engine failure during flight. So... Whenever you're learning to fly multi-engine planes in real life, it's basically single-engine training. Because once, if both engines on a multi-engine plane are running, it flies pretty much just like a single-engine plane. Multi-engine training in real life is all about learning to fly the plane on a single engine. Uh, so that's very important knowledge that we have to talk about. So engine failure in flight uh, how do you determine the engine has failed, or which engine has failed? Well, you can look at your gauges, obviously, but you should notice that the plane's going to yaw, yaw in the direction of the dead engine. So, what do we do for an engine failure in flight? Well, i got a checklist here. Engine failure during flight, determine if conditions allow, determine an operative engine. We should pretty quickly be able to figure out which, one, which one's dead. Now, before you do securing flows, there is a another flow you need to do, and that's the check flows. After the engine has failed, you check fuel. You want to check fuel flow, check the selectors, and check quantity. So, real quick, we would check flow, quantity, flow, quantity, and selectors. Now, I've checked they're both they're they're good. Next, you check oil pressure and oil temperature both good on both engines right now because they're up and running. Magnetos, you check they're all on and mixture adjust until evidence of engine firing. An operative engine, to secure the inoperative engine, you identify the failed engine, verify the failed engine, uh, foot on rudder of the failed engine side and retard the throttle to confirm no loss of power. That's how you verify a failed engine. Feather failed engine. That should be the first thing you do. As soon as you verify that the engine has in fact failed and you want to secure it, feather that prop immediately because the dead prop, a dead prop gives you a lot of drag. And if you don't feather it, you're going to have a lot of drag and you're going to hit the ground a lot sooner than you would if you had feathered it. Okay, so... All that is a flow, by the way. That's stuff you should have memorized. So I'm going to fail the right engine this time. First, I'm going to put us back in a normal climb. There we go. I'm going to put us back in a normal climb, and as soon as my speed hits the top of the wide arc, I will fail the right engine. So we're in normal climb, normal climb. Okay. 
Okay, our right engine has failed. Notice how quickly the plane rolled over there. I'm going to pitch it down a little bit, arrest the climb. I want to keep my speed up. We verify that the right engine has failed. We have lost fuel flow on it. All that's good. Magnetos are good. Okay, we're going to decide we're going to secure this engine. Immediately, I'm going to feather the right engine. Yes, having a prop controller would help out a lot there. So now the right engine has feathered. I'm going to put my left rudder in. Good God, you are hard to control sometimes. Now I got the plane under control. Alright, fuel selector off, Vox pump off, mag switches off, prop sinker phaser off, alternator off, cow flap closed. I'm going to turn off the right engine's all magnetos. Its mixture's already out because that's how I failed it. Now I'm going to close its cow flap. Now this is a climb video, so you may be wondering why on earth are we talking about engine failures? Well, you need to know how to do a single engine climb. Real quick, I'm going to set us up to cruise on the single engine. Now, just because you have lost your engine, the airplane should be perfectly controllable once you get it. Once you get that engine secured and the prop feathered, it's much, much easier to control the airplane. All right, see I have it at pretty much level flight, maintaining 130 knots, and perfectly under control. So what we're gonna do is now, we're gonna put the aircraft in a climb. The way I like to do that with a single engine is I pitch up slightly and then increase throttle at the same time. Now be careful how much throttle you give it, because the more throttle you give it, the harder it's going to be to control, the more rudder and aileron you have to put into it. Okay, now we're at full throttle. Make sure you do your throttle changes slowly, that way you can keep up with the airplane. Now you may notice we're flying at 120 knots, and we're not climbing very much. Also, try to keep the plane coordinated. The better your coordination, the less drag you're going to have. So, single engine climb, keep the aircraft coordinated, and keep slow throttle adjustments. Also, note you are not going to climb as well as you would if you had two engines running. maintain above blue line at all times in fact I'd say around 115 knots no less we're only gonna get 200 feet per minute out of this plane so 200 feet per minute is the most we can hope for maintaining just just above 115 knots I'm getting about 250 feet per minute right now I brought some of that aileron out might be able to get a little bit more. Come on. Yeah, it's really... This is something you gotta practice. I'm a little out of practice with it. Keeping it coordinated is the hard part, especially when you ain't got rudder pedals. But keeping it coordinated is very important because the better your coordination, the less drag you have, and the better you can climb. Also, this airplane has three axis trims, so don't be afraid to use it. Rudder, aileron, and elevator trim. Alright, well that covers climb really. We've taught single engine climbs and you're seeing how it's going. You can see that even though we only have one engine, we are still capable of climbing, albeit slowly. And your arm's going to get a lot more tired really quickly. Alright, now before I end the video, I want to talk just a few things to note about climb. As we said, fuel pumps on low, above 12,000 feet or if you see fluctuations in fuel flow. 
Another thing is, above 5,000 feet, your throttle's gonna be on full. Now, above 9,000 feet, the airplane's gonna start climbing much slower. Although, this plane can get up to the 20,000s, really. I think so. I think it can do about 20,000. It takes a little while to get up there, because above 9,000 feet, the climb rate starts dropping because you're hitting the point where the engines are producing sort of maximum power. And the higher you climb, the less power they're gonna be producing at that point. So, once you get above 9,000 feet, climb rate starts dropping. That's something to note, especially if you're flying IFR. Because remember, you gotta have at least a minimum climb rate of 500 feet per minute to fly IFR. If you cannot do that, you have to advise ATC. So usually around 9,000 feet, you're gonna have to start saying, hey ATC, I can't climb faster than 500 feet per minute anymore. And they'll say, Roger, and they'll just, they'll just give you a, a little bit wider berth on the vertical because they, uh, they now know that you cannot meet the 500 foot per minute climb rate. That's also something to note in mountainous areas when flying IFR, or even flying in general, if you can't clear obstacles in this aircraft to meet the climb gradient for departure procedures or to get up to the minimum IFR altitude or whatever. Alright, so that's just stuff I want to talk about. That was climb in the Cessna 310. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.